How would you like to listen to this for the next 15 minutes? Now what's 15 minutes to you is like five hours to me. So I'm taking most of the original audio out of this video and just talking over it because I'm not listening to that shit for the next couple hours. I also want to go over one thing real quick. Despite my best efforts to make it so that my titles are very specific to the vehicles I'm working on, sometimes these videos show up in a search not related to it. There's nothing I can do about it. So I'm just going to give you a heads up. If you look at the wire coming off the negative battery terminal on your Tahoe or Silverado, and you see something like this, this little plastic thing right here on this trailblazer, you see that wrapped around the negative battery wire, this video doesn't apply to you. I don't want to waste your time. The way that the charging system works in those trucks is a little bit different. So, sorry that you were deceived and you found this video even though it doesn't apply to you. Give me a thumbs down and get the fuck out of here. Now, as you may have seen on social media, I had a problem last month with the alternator in my Tahoe. And I was kind of bummed out that I couldn't actually show the formal diagnostic procedure for it. But a couple days later, I get a call. My buddy's got a Silverado. Had the exact same problem. So I went out here and filmed it. Alright, what's up guys? Got a 2003 Silverado. Y'all seen this truck before. So for our formal diagnosis on the charging system in this Silverado, we're going to start at the battery. I'm going to go ahead and hook one lead of my meter up to the negative battery terminal. The other lead over on here onto the positive terminal. I'm going to set my meter to DC volts. And when it's all said and done, this is what we got. We've got the red lead of the meter hooked up to the positive battery terminal. We've got the black lead, which in my case is a blue lead of the meter hooked up to the negative battery terminal. The meter set to DC volts and the engine is off. We're sitting at like 12.2 volts. So that's like our starting point. Now we're going to set up our same test here at the alternator. So we've got the alternator B plus stud and we've got the alternator case ground. And in this picture you can kind of see the GND there below the blue arrowhead. Red lead of the meter to the alternator B plus stud. The other lead of the meter to the alternator case ground. Go ahead and start the truck up. So in summary, the red lead of the meter to the alternator B plus stud, the other lead of the meter to the case of the alternator, the meter set to DC volts, and the engine is running. And you can see our voltage again is like 12.3 volts. I think it was 12.2 on the battery test. A difference of a couple tenths of a volt is normal. But 12.3 volts with the engine running is not normal. The alternator is not putting out any voltage. So now I'm just going to pop this engine cover off. It's just got one 8 millimeter bolt, I believe, holding it on. Now I'm showing you guys the connector from the alternator from this angle, just so you guys can get a better view. You don't have to have the alternator out to do this, but I just wanted to show you that you just got to pull this little clippy up here, and then the connector will slide right out. Now inside that four pin connector, you want the second one from the end is a brown wire, and that's the one that the PCM uses to turn on the alternator. So I got Mr. T-pin. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go back behind the connector into the cavity where the brown wire is and that's where I'm going to clip the red lead from the meter up to with the truck running. So I've got my meter grounded to the alternator case, taking the red lead, clipping it on the T-pin. This is with the truck running. I'm at 10.6 volts and that tells me that the computer is trying to turn the alternator on. Now two out of three technicians don't own their own clamp meter, so I don't expect any do-it-yourselfer to have their own. But if you did, you can also clamp the alternator just to see if you have any output. What you're seeing here on this screen is just residuals. This uh, clamp meter is kind of sensitive, so it's normal for it to have a little bit of a small fluctuation on the display. So let's review the evidence here. We've got 12 volts at the alternator B plus stud. We've got a ground at the alternator case. Our turn on from the PCM is okay. We have no voltage output from the alternator and we have no amperage output from the alternator. So the verdict here, the alternator's bad. And we're gonna replace it. So before I get started, I'm gonna disconnect the negative battery terminal from this battery. I'm also gonna go ahead and remove this intake duct. Now this is so I can access the belt tensioner. It's just got two clamps, I believe they're eight millimeter. There's a little hose that sticks up through the tubing. Not a big deal to pull that guy off. I didn't feel it was that important to show you guys that. 
Look, I'm struggling getting this thing off. <laughs> struggling! Now, before you take a belt off of anything that has multiple pulleys on it, it's always a good idea to draw a little sketch. You guys have seen this before on this channel. In this case, the sticker's still intact that shows us the belt routing, so I'm not, I didn't draw a picture, and I'm not, I'm not going to lie and say that I did. I really didn't. Here's a good look at the bolt I'm actually going to grab right here on the tensioner pulley itself. Got Mr. 15 millimeter. Go ahead and push this guy clockwise. That's going to relieve the tension on the belt. And I can just go ahead and slip it off the alternator right here and then carefully ratchet the tensioner back. You don't want that guy to snap back. Could fuck it up. This is probably one of the easiest alternators to do. Got like two 15 millimeter bolts that hold it in. And that's pretty much it. So I'm just going to go ahead and get these guys out of here. On this Silverado, there's a 10 millimeter nut that holds the alternator B plus lead on. Go ahead and loosen that guy with a excessively long ratchet for some reason. I don't know what was up with that. Also going to take Mr. Pry Bar here. Give me a little bit of assistance to get this guy out of this bracket. Like I showed you earlier for the alternator connector, just pull up the little tabby, pop the connector out. And there she is, she's out. Probably one of the easiest alternator videos you've seen on this channel. Now let's go back for a second to the picture I showed you guys at the beginning of this video. You might have noticed when I showed you under the hood of my Tahoe, I had the alternator and the battery out. Now the reason is, is this truck was driven with the alternator not working. The wife called me in a panic about, I think the check gauges light was on and the battery light was on and I think the DIC said check charging system and she wanted to know what to do while I'm at work. Drive the fucking truck. You know what I mean? Just drive it home. Since the truck was used without the alternator working, I also took the battery out of my Tahoe, took it to work, and put it on a charger the next day. Now I'm also going to charge the battery in this Silverado, but I'm not going to take it out. You try this at your own risk. What I'm doing here, I'm taking the B plus lead, and I'm kind of tucking it back in the boot, and then I'm just securing the boot by just smushing it between these two uh, wire looms so it doesn't move. Then I'm going to hook the negative cable back up, and I'm going to connect my battery charger, just a low 10 amp trickle charger, nothing crazy. The reason for doing this is, this truck was also driven without the alternator working. Trickle charged the battery while we went to AutoZone and got an alternator and got something to eat. The reason for doing that is a really, really weak battery can put like a 30 amp load on the alternator. And as you're going to see, this truck runs off like 60 amps with all the accessories working. So if I added another 30 amps to that, it could burn out the alternator really easily. Now the parts place is going to want to know, do you have a 105 amp alternator or a 145 amp alternator? Here's the way you can tell. What you want to do is you want to look for a gap between the two halves of the alternator if you were looking at it sideways, kind of like you see here in this picture. So if you look at the picture on the left, you can see the two halves of the alternator kind of smushed together touching each other. That's the 105 amp. The alternator on the right, where the two halves are coming together, there's a gap. And if you look real carefully, you can see like some of the bolts that go through the back half of the case into the front half of the case. If it has that gap right there, it's the 145 amp alternator. As far as interchangeability, I don't know if it would work, but I can tell you this. The four pin connector for the 2003 Silverado with the 105 amp alternator is the same for the 2004 Tahoe with the 145 amp alternator. Now in the 2003 Silverado, I don't think that truck has power windows or power locks or heated seats or any of that stuff. But in my 2004 Tahoe, it's fully loaded minus nav. So it's got the heated seats, front and rear air conditioner, power windows, power locks, all that shit. So I would not put the 105 amp alternator in the Tahoe, but maybe if I could get away with it, maybe put the 145 amp alternator in the Silverado. I don't know. The only alternator upgrades I do is if it's something from like Mechman or somebody like that, like I did in my Trailblazer. So here I'm just preparing this alternator we got from AutoZone. Pop it in this thing. Ah, oh, this motherfucker doesn't fit. What the fuck? So just take Mr. Hammer. I'm going to bang out these little 
I don't know what you call them, spacers. Same thing here. Bang Mr. Spacer into the bracket. Now when I did this in my Tahoe, for some reason I couldn't get a good angle on one of those little spacer thingies, so I had to take a striking pry bar and kind of strike the pry bar to push that little thingy back in. Now if those thingies pushed in, this alternator fits right down in there. I'm just going to go ahead and put the two big bolts back in it. Get them things snug down. I'm going to go ahead put the B plus lead back onto the alternator. And connect Mr. 4 pin. I forgot to tell you guys this, but before I did this, I took my charger off the battery and I disconnected the negative terminal. So now I'm just going to put the negative terminal back on. Go ahead, push the tensioner back down. Get this belt back up on here. Give it a little once over just to make sure it's connected to the power steering pump and everything okay. Just a little double check, just make sure everything's cool. I'm going to go ahead and slap this intake tube back up on here. I don't know if it's because it's cold or what. She doesn't want to go back on there. I'm just going to take the engine oil dipstick out of here and wipe the oil off the end of it. And I'm going to use that oil around the intake tube. It's going to make putting it back on a little bit easier. You know, sometimes when you make a little house call, you don't have everything you need with you. And sometimes you got to improvise just like that. It doesn't matter if it's used motor oil. All I'm doing is trying to get a rubber fucking tube to slip over a, a metal throttle body. Adapt and overcome or something like that. Go ahead and snug back down the clamps for the intake tube. Go ahead and put this engine cover back on. And let's fire it up. Now I'm also going to do a little recheck here. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to ground the meter at the alternator case. I'm going to hook the red lead up to the B plus stud meter on DC volts. I'm also going to take my clamp meter, go ahead and clamp the output wire of the alternator. Now keep in mind that it was like, I don't know, it was probably didn't even break 25 degrees this day, so it's stupid cold outside. So an alternator reading of 14.9 volts on a stupid cold day is normal. Now I wanted to see what this alternator could do as far as output, so I'm turning all the accessories on. Now you can kind of see it here in this blurry ass picture. I turned the HVAC all the way up to 5. I've got all the lights on in the truck. Sometimes I go ahead and turn the wipers on too. But for this video I didn't because if you guys saw the fluctuating volts and amps, it might throw you off. So I just kept it simple. So after sitting on the trickle charger, the truck starts up okay. With all the accessories, except for the wipers on, we're pulling 64 amps, 14.9 volts. The alternator is working properly and this truck is fixed. The whole reason for me making this video is to show you guys the testing of what they call the generator L terminal. Again, that's the one that the PCM uses to turn the alternator on. If you didn't have that 10 volt signal there, that alternator is not going to turn on. You can put in three or four alternators. It doesn't matter what you do, it's not going to turn on without that wire. If you don't believe me, you can go out to your 03 or 04 Silverado or Tahoe right now, unplug that four pin connector, and tell me how good your alternator is working. Go ahead, try it. If I didn't have 10 volts at that generator L terminal wire, I wouldn't have put an alternator in. I would have proceeded with the diagnostics, which pretty much would have been doing a continuity test from the PCM to that wire right there. Or it could even be trying to turn on the wire with the scan tool. Maybe I've got a bad driver in the PCM. What I'm getting at here is, is if I didn't have 10 volts in the four pin connectors brown wire, I'm not putting an alternator on this truck. That's the whole point I'm trying to make here. It doesn't matter if it's my own fucking Tahoe or a customer's fucking Tahoe. I'm gonna do the test to make sure that the alternator itself is bad. That's what separates me from other motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? That's what separates me from a lot of people that I've worked with who fucking suck big fucking motherfuckers that have been doing this 20, 30 years. 
don't know how to use a multimeter, don't know how to use a scan tool. Now this shit right here that we're doing, it kind of goes back to something I talked about in my last video for the 2008 uh, Silverado throttle body service. In that video I share with you guys a story about a place I used to work at where those guys just kept throwing parts at this thing. They couldn't figure it out. Uh, me being the new guy, it was passed on to me. And I did my own little investigation and I was able to figure out what was wrong with the truck and actually fixed it. And at that very moment right there, that's when motherfuckers at work hated me. You know what I'm saying? They hate me because I do what they can't do. I'm sorry that the dealership that I worked at invested a lot of time and money into me to educate me on how these modern vehicles work. I'm so fucking sorry motherfuckers have the nerve to get mad at somebody because they're more educated than them. What the fuck is wrong with that picture? Here you guys had an opportunity to learn shit from a motherfucker that's been doing this for 23 years and get paid for it at the same time and you'd rather get mad. Oh, that motherfucker thinks he's so good. I don't think I'm so good. I'm experienced and I'm educated. You motherfuckers are stupid and broke. You know what I'm saying? That's why you motherfuckers don't even have a little cheap code reader. You know what I mean? I got my choice of top tier scan tools. The best part of getting in front of this camera and making fun of you guys is getting paid to do it. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead. Make fun of my Snap-on toolbox. Oh, how they're overpriced and all this stuff. You'll never be able to afford one. Like this motherfucking clown right here throwing shit up on Facebook. Let's fill it with tools. It's not yours. What the fuck you mean let's fill it with tools? You're going to fill a toolbox that's not yours full of tools that's not yours. That's worse than this little motherfucker who wanted to be like me so bad. He had to go out and get a little service cart for work. You know what I'm saying? And then the motherfucker's dipping out on his $10 a week payment. You know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers talking about how much money they're making on the side. Coming in on Monday morning. Bumming cigarettes. Yeah, you're making all money on the side, motherfucker. In your fantasy world. Well, I think that about wraps it up for today's video. In this video, we've learned a lot about the way that the alternator works in this era of Silverado and Tahoe. We know that we need a signal from the PCM to turn the alternator on, and that this signal wire should definitely be tested before condemning the alternator. You don't want to be the guy that says, well, if the alternator ain't charging, it needs an alternator. And then you put in the alternator, and it doesn't fix it. You don't want to be that guy. Well, maybe you do want to be that guy. I hope you don't want to be that guy, and that's why you're watching these videos. So anyway, if you like what you see, subscribe. If you don't like it, well, go kick rocks. Like it, don't like it, doesn't really matter. There's more coming. Stay tuned. You know, whenever I go on a road test at work, I bring my phone with me in case something happens. But lately, I've just been recording myself at work on road tests. Maybe I'll show all that footage sometime. Memoirs of a mechanic on road tests. I was just listening to this commercial, and they were talking about this pizza place and how it's so awesome. And you know the motherfuckers are reading off a script, you know what I'm saying? It's like, here's customer testimonials for their fucking pizza. It's fake. I can tell it's fake. You want something real here? I'll give you guys a real fucking pizza testimonial. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I like to go to um, Jimbo's Pizza, you know, down there in Laurel. Um, I like to go there. I like to eat the pizza. I like to sit at one of the booths and masturbate to the young waitresses that work there. Now, that would be a real fucking testimonial. Oh, the, the pizza's very delicious. Nobody fucking talks like that. Fuck. Sorry.